Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, well, we're not dealers, but in these times, it's good to have friends in high places. Throw me a line at tmasso at thewatchbox.com, and we might get something done. Today, we are discussing the 100-piece limited edition stainless steel H. Moser & C. Streamliner Flyback Chronograph, possibly my favorite new watch of the last year. This is a timepiece that references the past without plagiarizing. Let's take a quick look at the size because it's a little bit deceptive. This watch is all about proportion. Now, technically, it is 42.3 millimeters in diameter, but as with many cases that flow seamlessly into bracelet and have an unconventional shape, it's difficult to imagine exactly where you measure. The timepiece is 14.2 millimeters thick, which is reasonable considering the complexity of the mechanism, and if you measure it simply lug to lug, it's 42 millimeters. If you're to measure the link at each side, which is the true distance across the wrist, then it's 47.7, both conducive to comfort on a smaller wrist, as the watch, which has a beautiful integrated bracelet, sits comfortably on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. All of stainless steel, it's substantial, it doesn't feel toy-like, but the online photos of the watch make it appear massive, and it's anything but. The details are actually quite delicate, nuanced, and the thought that went into this watch, not just from head-on, but from every angle, speaks to the degree of confidence in Moser's design team that it could create a watch that was 70s style and integrated bracelet without being derivative. I would recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference and it is quite comfortable. The great triumph of this watch is that it proposes an original idea. You can see for example an Omega Speedmaster Professional Mark II in the shape of the case and the radial satin graining of the bezel. You can see maybe a little bit of an Omega lobster tail or an Ebel sport wave in the bracelet, but at the same time, it isn't exactly a match for any of these. It's its own thing, and it's anything but another Nautilus and Royal Oak knockoff. Good God, we don't need any more of those. Thank goodness Moser gave us something that captures the fun of those watches without the exact imagery. You'll also note the degree of attention to detail in the finish as the beveling in between the links is as delicate and thoughtful as the beveling down the shoulder, which you'll note is perfectly aligned. There's both satin finish and polish along the sides, which is impressive. And then there's longitudinal satin finish across the tops. The clasp itself is low in profile with a twin trigger action, so this one's not going to pop open accidentally. It's handsome and low in profile, and the interior is curved to match the underside of the wrist. Now you can see Moser went for the no-risk solution using a pin and sleeve system, so you're going to need a punch and a block to size the watch, but it is a little bit more secure at the limit than a screw-fixed link system. Rolling back to the case, you can see the hollow profiles that are a signature of Moser watches are reprised here. It's a little bit of a hollows that extends from lug to lug rather than the scalloped portions you'll see on the Ventura or the Endeavor. You'll also note that there is a distinction between the satin inner case and the polished outer lip, which creates a nice contrast, and you'll also appreciate that the pushers for the chronograph are anything but a default design as they have a unique form shared with nothing else in the Moser catalog or the industry as a whole. Now the watch is a flyback, which means you could see the seconds hand and the minute hand jump back and restart automatically when you press the flyback trigger. Now, it's not a split-second chronograph. You're looking at a system much like the old Zin Easy M1, where you have a radial display of seconds, but you also have a radial display of minutes. So it jumps every minute, and it is a jumping minute indicator. To make it easier to read the minute scale, those tiny Daytona-style registers are so hard to discern. This makes it quite clear. There's also a racing-style checkered flag motif about the seconds track that makes it easy to read not just the chronograph seconds, but the fractions of second. When you look at an oblique angle, you can also see that there is a reha, or chapter ring, featuring units per hour, so miles per hour, kilometers per hour, your choice. This is a motorsport-style calibration that, in conjunction with the chronograph, allows you to gauge the speed of an object over a closed course, such as a standing kilometer. Note the hands are an interesting hybrid design, as you have lovely polished or red varnished bases, and then an applique of solid luminous material. You'll also note that the dial itself is Moser's signature fumet, so it fades from a sort of 
gray satin at center to almost black at its edge with a few well-chosen red accents. You'll also note that it's a vertical satin finish, a little bit like the longitudinal stainless steel of a DeLorean or the radial lapping machine laid satin finish of the bezel itself. Now the timepiece includes a spectacular movement. We're going to talk about it starting on the dial side because this is a 54 hour automatic movement with a rotor under the dial. You don't actually see the rotor. It doesn't obscure your view of the case back. Once again, this is a movement that can be used as a conventional chronograph or as a flyback chronograph, ideal for motorsports enthusiasts of all stripes. We're going to get close here and take a look at the Agengraf chronograph caliber doing business as the HMC 902. It's not precisely the Agengraf as you'll see in other makes. Uh, this one has been highly customized. You can see the watch is a 100 piece limited edition with a screw down crown. All of this is water resistant down to 120 meters which puts it neck and neck with the Aquanaut and the Nautilus. Now you also can see that the movement is exceptional in its layout. It is a column wheel lateral clutch of an unusual character. The column wheel is self-explanatory. It's crisp, it makes for a sharp actuation, it's a traditional chronograph architecture, but what appears to be a lateral clutch doesn't quite operate as one. Think of a toothed mesh, but also think of a meshing between two smooth wheels, wherein essentially you have a lateral clutch that works with the seamless precision of a vertical clutch. It doesn't jump when it actuates. It simply starts like a vertical clutch does. There's no jump or stagger, but you also get the beauty and visibility of a lateral clutch, which you can see, and thus is inherently more pleasing than the hidden vertical clutch system that is nevertheless a bit smoother. This is a system that is shock resistant, jump resistant, that allows you to see all of the mechanism, and the watch is impressive. With 434 parts, you get to see a jungle of finely finished metal, and from every Every angle, the finish is exemplary with satin finish, mirrored chamfers, black polished screws, and engine turned perlage satin on the wheels. And as you could see, so many details that differ from what you will see on a conventional watch. Free sprung, it's shock resistant and beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. And remember, this is the same fundamental movement that you'll find in the Singer Track 1, one of the most mechanically accomplished chronographs going anywhere. And if you wonder who is Agenor, the company behind this movement, well, suffice to say, they have a laundry list of clients that reads as a who's who of high horology. Most notably, the Harry Winston Opus series. Yes, that's the kind of pedigree you're getting here. Moser, above all, is Swiss made, and this watch is that to a T. An extraordinary machine with two barrels to ensure that after, for example, 24 hours, you don't have the giant amplitude drop off that you would have in a single barrel a la Rolex. This is a watch that features manifold aesthetic and technical refinements, one of the most innovative looking watches of the last year, one of the most technically innovative watches of the last year, and hell, this darn thing, take a look at the case back. The movement is 34.4 millimeters. It's even properly sized for the case. No stone left unturned. Again, email tmosso at thewatchbox.com and I can probably get you the hookup. This is the H Moser and C Streamliner Flyback Chronograph. And we're back with the Moser blazing away on its 55 jewels. You want more? This watch gives you more. How about a factory claim that the chronograph can be actuated underwater? They thought of everything.